Greetings, dear friends. We connect from around the world, linking with love of our hearts and light of our minds. Gathering in our circle. The 2025 initiative and the Hikal group with the Klanskali group welcome you. Now a creative lab awakening the souls of our nations. Let us begin. Over to you, Uta. Thank you. Alexander, hello friends. Here we are again in our Creative Nations Lab, where we gather as spiritual students from many nations every month to practice planetary eldership, to learn to oversee the affairs of the family of nations to train the skills which may be required for members of the uni United Nations of the future. So in today's sessions in this Cancer Energy, we will focus on our lighted space, lighted house, our workspace, and uh, develop it further, our Council Chamber of Elders in Training. And uh, towards the end of the session, we will also pick up on our new line of work with the field of relationships between our nations, going over the what we did last time to give it more substance. So, this council chamber that we are building already for quite a while, it's our safe space where we meet as colleagues working for the highest good. Highest good of all of humanity. And we work together here, no matter what is going on in our nations, and between our nations. We hold the inner unity always. And we learn to establish a stable telepathic field. Such a refined field, receptive, focused, enables a closer working relationship with our elders. And at the same time also, when we keep this telepathic field stable, it may serve us uh, as, a, as a tool to discern through it the underlying energy patterns playing out on the world stage. So it's actually an eye, or as Alexander said yesterday in the full moon meeting, a membrane, or we might also call it a lens through which communication is enabled and things can come into view. That's the function of the Planetary Ajna Center. So with each meditation and each sharing, we are making this lens more precise. And we add substance to our dedicated workspace in the subtle realm. So to remind ourselves that this is an actual place on a higher plane which we are building. Is it on the etheric plane or on the astral, on the mental plane? Discernment may come as we work.
what we can say is that through our visualizations, we build in astral buddhic quality. And through tracing a diagram, which we are doing now, we may add mental geometrical structure form. These attempts to do so, through them, we give outer expression to our inner perception. And this effort, through this effort, we make our inner perceptions more precise with time. And we stabilize our building capacity in subtle matter. So it's actually in this way we actively, with intent, build a lighted house. DK calls us to develop telepathic sensitivity. Telepathic sensitivity. And he also asks us to record our impressions. He says like this in the Glamour book, page 17, I think, keep detailed records preserve the scientific attitude of detachment and of recognition and write down all that is sensed, seen or contacted. These records will serve as the basis of analysis. I take here this opportunity to thank Margot for her untiring work of taking notes of our sharing in the nation's lab. In our team meetings between the webinars, we reflect on these records and we see the value of this. It's really an important part, very helpful in developing this scientific attitude that DK speaks of. He also says that we may not yet be able to discern what we are actually doing on the various subtle planes. But he says that this record taking is the first step, recording all registered phenomena. So it's quite a fifth ray approach and our discernment will grow with practice. In this way, we will more and more consciously shape together our meeting space. So let's take a look at this picture on the screen, which shows our various alignments We have started only with the, with the pinnacles picture, depicting, um, so to speak, our position of, of the conscious self for our nation, standing on this pinnacle and lighting a flame of consciousness on it. And now as a second step, we have this council chamber looking a little bit like a spaceship. Um, so we project a line upwards to where we as representatives of our various nations meet together in this council chamber on behalf of the human family as a whole. So these are two levels. In last month's meditation, we have added this element of the flame of the will to love 
We visualized it in the center of the council chamber. It is made up of the combined flames from our pinnacles and it becomes the will to write relations between our nations. So perhaps we will also find a way to, to depict it in the picture. So we are here tracing future lines of connection and creating a seed for a future UN. And we do this through tracing a geometrical structure and building in appropriate qualities. Let's stay for a moment with this. We do this, we create this seed through tracing a geometrical structure and building in appropriate qualities. Yeah, and then sharing our findings, our impressions. And uh, by doing so again and again, we precision the seed. Last month, council chamber experience that we had, uh, all our impressions were especially rich. So we thought to bring some of them back into our awareness. So we'll just share a few of them. A crystalline or glass building set in a clearing of very tall pine trees. A two-dimensional rotating metatron. Merkaba. An etheric space in perfect geometrical form. Incorporating the four directions. A pinpointed focused vehicle. A timeless heart chamber of mankind established over a long time. It is being built as a hexagonal shape, like the bees build. They construct it through humming. And this is how we are constructing. Through humming. The central flame is a seed of the future. It represents the inner unity of the diversities of the nations. This flame is imbued with the work that has been done by all of us. Hard lines begin to melt in the flame. Courageous will to love. Achieving consensus. Clarity within the ashram. Calm, peaceful, purposeful, clear, almost crystalline energy. As every energy involved with that form is engaged with purposeful forward moving activity.
So we can take some of these of our previous impressions as a basis for our continued work, but at the same time also being able to come fresh into the council chamber in each meditation and see, learn this subtle balance that uh, is needed here between holding the continuity of the work on the one side and being ever receptive to more refined vision on the other. Okay, so let us get ready for our work lighting our council chamber. Let's withdraw our attention, first of all, into our own inner place of stillness. Letting go of all that we have, all the words that we heard now. And breathing deeply, grounding in our body. And in the earth, We are calmly present as a soul in incarnation. Taking our position now on a pinnacle overlooking our nation, midway between its soul and its outer life. Feeling the love for our nation. And feeling also our freedom from it. And now fine tuning our vibration further, assuming the role of an elder in training on behalf of the family of nations as a whole. Taking a moment to calibrate our heart to the all-embracing will to love. emulating the Christ. And making our mind now as inclusive as we can, aspiring to a planetary perspective. making it wide and also stable. We offer ourselves in service to humanity. Letting ourselves now be drawn to the beautiful building set in nature which we already know well.
entering into the quiet and clear and spacious chamber. Taking our places in geometric order. Sense the atmosphere in the chamber, the geometrical harmony. Visualize the flame of our combined, sustained will to love burning in the center of the chamber. Streamlining our hearts to it. Binding them all together. And affirming in our heart the will to write relations. And weaving now with our minds a unified telepathic field. Synchronizing our thinking stabilizing this mental field. We notice the presence of high deva beings helping us to hold this space. Entering a focused silence. Let us invoke the presence of our co-workers in the ashram who guide and support this nation's work. And let us tune to the vibration of our ashramic guides making ourselves available for a more direct working relationship. Let us take a couple of minutes in silent receptivity for this communion and attunement.
gently refocusing in the council chamber. Allowing the received impressions to be registered in the group mind and the high vibration to be absorbed into the chamber space. Taking another moment for this consolidation, maybe taking notes before we will start our sharing. Okay, let us keep the meditative quality as we now share our experience with the council chamber. Being aware that through our voices, we add substance to the chamber, mental structure and astral buddhic qualities. So let us share as an act of sacred building, seeing each offering as a building block or a refinement for the chamber. So please raise your hand when you're ready. And yeah, let us all receive the offerings meditatively. Greetings, everyone. Thank you again for a strong speech for us to operate and thank you for reading the images that are accumulating in our chalice it brought to mind a strong image for me which was reflected in the esoteric advent soul star group and i'll send that image on to Uta and Margo. The, the uh, visualization brought me to appreciate the livingness of our network 
in purpose. And by that, I mean that we can imagine we here physically are 15 countries and three continents, perhaps, whatever. However, when we think of the interconnections that exist in our multiple uh, activities, the recognition of harmonizing actually takes effect. For me, it sounded the humming on different frequencies. And when we talked about building structure, it occurred to me the structure is of an entirely different nature than we live in today because our structure, its first basic element is motion. M motion ever changing and yet maintaining a quality of, of rhythm that magnetizes more and more people and groups into a vortex of the will to good. And so the qualities, for now, let me say fluidity, but the qualities, again, are ever permeable, ever interconnecting, ever moving, which can only be achieved through this uh, very palpable but intuitive quality of recognition. Mm -hmm. So, Today happens to be uh, the birthday of my country, the United States. And if I were planning the party, it would not be fireworks. If I were planning the party, it would be creating a cool space that it would allow it to release what it no longer needs so that it truly reorients itself to its essential purpose, which is to light the way. That being said, it's not possible without the network of other harmonizing countries. It does not exist on its own. Rather, it's a, a, a contributing experiment toward this quality of harmony. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Malta. Let us, uh, in this sharing, um, relate only to the council chamber to keep this this energy before we go to our nations Hello, everybody, and thank you again, Uta, for a beautiful meditation. Um, I had an interesting thing today because I followed what in the image that we all look at are those lines of light that seem to 
for me, they seem to be reaching upward. And in fact, I watched that light take us and many more beyond us to those pinnacles um, and down through the pinnacles into the center of the earth. And what I saw in the center of the earth, I thought might be the Merkaba that I saw before, but it was so interesting. It was so clarified the shape that I saw to, I guess, show me that it was in fact not the Merkaba because it began as a dodecahedron, which is a 12-sided, five-faced sort of ball, more or less. And so it's 12 pentagons that are in a three-dimensional form. But as I watched that, each of those faces took on another structure that was actually made it into a star. So it was a 12-pointed star, but it was important to recognize the star points were coming from that five, that pentagon. And from there, that was the source of light that was coming up through the earth, through the pinnacles, through those of us standing on those pinnacles, and then directed up into that upper chamber light that is in that vision. And what was communicated in that was that it was a dualistic flow, that it truly was not mm -hmm. all just coming up, but it was actually raining down and coming up. There was a real motion in, in, in that sort of light stream, maybe an electric light stream, but a light stream that was kind of above us and then deep below us. Hmm. Thank you, Andrea. This is our experience for a long time in our Jerusalem meditation, that this is a dualistic flow, mm -hmm. that there is something in the earth that um, is the counterpart of that which comes from above. Thanks. Hello, this is Margot from Canada. Crystalline building. Air is different inside. Harmony is precise and expanding, expansive. The flame in the center is white hot and blue, yet cool. The fire that does not burn. The will to right relationship solidifies. The field becomes ordered and stable. Devas subtly hold. In the silence, a sound begins to be audible. It seems vertical. Elders in ashram are invoked and the sound sounding energy intensifies. Sound emerges from deep within the temple, outward, purifying, adjusting, realigning a creative force. A white amorphous shape begins to appear, which I will name the Christ impulse. As this is absorbed, the color and structure move into new awareness for which I have no words. Thank you, Marco.
Well, hello everyone. Uh, again, it's such a joy to participate together with you all as we meet in this conclave, this hall of wisdom, if you will, this temple of humanity for the building of a new United Nations. The uh, uh, focus of my impression really has to do with uh, the Trinity as we meet in the etheric frequency of substance, a common ground of group subjective resonance to build a lighted house. As souls meeting in buddhic ashramic creative space in the midway point between atma logoic will purpose and manas higher mind receptive to soul purpose and plan for our nations and as we recognize as best as we can scientifically the reality of working at this level and within the three related planes of the triad the love wisdom capacity which is of a magnetic nature is that midway buddhic essence of soul consciousness that can build this occult relationship and activation of the soul's threefold forces this activation of a group's central flame brings through both the intelligent activity, the inner recognition of unity and oneness, and the realization of the sole purpose, the destiny of our nations. It's in the identification, perhaps, with and as the soul of the nation, our nations, that a group can recognize this threefold function within our nations and as a new prototype of the United Nations that is attracting co-workers receptive each in their own way to divine purpose intelligent activity and the heart's overall coherence this group life that can radiate outwardly in subjective unity the intelligent activity of awakening to soul purpose within every member of their society this threefold radiance thank you thanks jonathan Hello, this is uh, Judy from the United States. Um, as I stood in the council chamber, I recognized uh, that I was in that place where hierarchy stands, where the new group of world service stand, where we stand together with the oneness, with the deva of humanity. And this meditation was a continuation of my meditation from uh, Full Moon and Cancer, which started a number of days before. My thinking of how we uplift humanity, how we support the first initiation, where we stand together, uh, was something that was on my mind. And for those days before, my lower centers were really aching and they were full. And I understood that what was needed was to lift the center of where humanity stands from its lower center to its throat so that we could be with uh, those beings throughout humanity that stand in active intelligence. 
And so from this place, which was the council chamber, basically the light of hierarchy, the love of hierarchy, the light of the new group of world servers went through the pillars of cancer and went to every one of the five planetary centers. And within the center, every country was lighted. So it was groupings of all of the peoples of all of the worlds were receiving the light. And there was a lightness from finally my lower chakras and my throat just really radiated. And so today when we were in this chamber, it was an understanding that those leaders are now uh, leading an enlightened humanity or humanity not yet enlightened, but ready to participate actively, to, to work at the level of active intelligence. And when that can happen, then unity finally you know, takes place. So at the end, when we were connecting with our masters, those beings that have been supporting this effort, there was a comfort in knowing that uh, we are really standing in a place where that work is making a difference, uh, not on a theoretical level, but on an actual level, uh, both above and below. And that chamber really is kind of the ashram of synthesis, if you will. It is that place today uh, where we stand to work. So thank you. Hmm. Very interesting, Judy. To realize, um, to start realizing where where is this common ground where we actually meet and where we make a difference, as you said. Isn't it the Ashna Center? I wonder. So much to to explore here, to discern as we continue. It's good to keep track of all these research questions. Thank you. Hi, this is Helen. Um, I want to share um, one element of uh, of uh, this uh, what this meditation uh, brought in me of, um, to the flame, which is the seed of the future that is in the center of uh, of the council chamber. I felt it like um, it gave me a, <laughs> a good sense, of, a group sense of uh, our participation to the will to love energy that we cultivate, um, that we cultivate in ourselves and in the work we do on all the levels up to the level of the council chamber. Um, one of the elements of uh, this meditation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a bit uh, touches on on similar similar things as Judy before. Where's our participation in all this chain of uh, 
levels of consciousness. Thank you, Helen. There was a request coming from Marga, who's taking notes for us, uh, asking to uh, speak slowly when you share. Thank you, Margo, again for your beautiful service. Yes, <clears throat> this is Deborah from the US. Um, there was such a rich, almost palpable uh, quality to the council chamber today, it seemed. Uh, walking in, it was obvious walking in that it was walking into uh, an almost velvet, but very refined velvet frequency uh, of etheric, utter, utter benevolence. And walking in, the silence was so deep and profound that it mirrored a dynamic silence of space, cosmic, cosmic being, and and yet it was in the it was in the light. It was manifest, and and walking toward the circle of seats. It, it, they, they, there were sparkles, like little little devas sparkling, <laughs> um, and there was such spaciousness, true spaciousness, not engineered, not um, yeah. It was just the spaciousness of the wholeness of the ashram and this temple. And I loved the evocation of of the of the devas because they were profound devic presences today the great light body of the christ is the great deva to which the others aspire and they were nearly palpable like pillars around the circle and the flame was of the three colors of the three rays of synthesis combined the the deep blue the radiant golden and the violet flame just oscillating and dancing together in the uh, flame in the center of the circle. And that flame seemed to just truly burn away um, all the strife, all the division, all the 
warring opposites and polarities of discord just just melted away and the deep silence resounded first in the center and then radiating out and truly at the then the center of our planet and humanity and there was a great wave of gratitude to the mother of the world to our mother earth who truly seeks the deepest most comprehensive healing because she is uh, a being a goddess of great beauty and grace So it was a a, a very, yeah, the lighted house its contents have no discord. Its, Its structure knows the source. The one that we are. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Yeah. I also had a strong sense of the Deva presence. I also sensed them as pillars, four pillars, standing around, safeguarding. And um, very much resonate with uh, the effect you describe of the flame, this unifying effect and uh, the spaciousness, the silence that it radiates. Hmm. that we participate in creating is quite something. Thanks. This is Darcy from the United States. This hidden ashram of the temple entered and surrounded by great mountains of protection. This dimensional space only entered by invitation to those who can enter. The white blue flame of Syrian origin from which a great Lord, the great Lord of all divas has now been able to, in this great moment, the great beings and brothers has waited for humanity to be able to receive this great Lord of the divas onto earth. The significance of this moment 
is of a new masonry of the new age. Liquid crystal light of a new photon nature is accessible for those to build the new temple. When we as points of light within our soul nation's light enter this temple, there is as on Sirius, no karma. Our souls, nations, are allowed to experience the place of no karma, assisting the purification and the remembering. The Buddha of activity that has been not active seems to possibly be given that activity. It's the Buddha of activity spoken of along the Gemini cancer line. This was what I was given and there was silence, a great, beautiful silence um, in the temple itself. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. Is there anyone else who would like to share before we go to our second part? There is sharing from Carlos Emilio from Argentina. Let the group contemplate creating the vertex of the new alignment. Thank you, Carlos. Um, Sabina from Klangschale, Germany. Uh, please just to add two sentences to all your very rich and somehow galactic sharing. Um, I got an experience that we as this group of elders in training for somehow a first time really touched this cosmic fluid of fire of the of the plasma of the constant creation so our whole space was filled with this fire it was just as a first touch of this as a group and um building the enlightened house. This house was not only enlightened, it was a fiery house. Thank you. Thanks, Sabina. It seems like Darcy also said, we are touching a new material with which to build. Okay, so let's go to our second item now, the relationships. 
among nations. Alexander, could you put on the text slide, please? So we said that through our unified telepathic field, um, we can use it also in order to recognize the energy patterns playing out in the world and to start working with them in cooperation with the with the inner ashram so we have this connectivity and we have um, the possibility to see to discern and uh, we had this quote also uh, in the last lab uh, webinar um, so let's read it the disciples learn to comprehend through discussion and experiment the nature of the energies which are seeking world expression and the nature of the forces which must be reduced to powerlessness if these new incoming energies are to prove effective in bringing about the desired changes under the plan. It seems that we are coming into a ripeness with this. Um, we know a little bit more what we are doing. We know we start to discern the energies and here in, in our sharing just now, this, the, we, we are given um, new possibilities with, with which to build also, to really play our part. So one aspect of this is what we are aiming here in the Nations Lab to do through meditative experiment and discussion is to bring our different viewpoints and impressions together so they may merge into a comprehensive planetary perspective to move into this function of planetary ajna. And this, of course, is a work in process, in process, in progress. And once we will have this planetary perspective, together, so then we, we as a world group know how to act creatively and become causal. And we know that we, as, as the world group, we are the instrument through which hierarchy must work. They cannot do it for us. They must not do it for us. The law of free will requires us to do it by ourselves. So it's on us to do this first step, to try to make sense of what is going on in our world. So what we have now embarked on last time, the looking at the relationships that our nation has with other nations, seems to be an important step towards perceiving the energy patterns within the family of nations. It's all a pioneering work, um, but perhaps this is a step, a doable step. So we will do now the same snapshot of our nation as we did last time, which focuses on the field of relationships of our nation in three steps. First with its next door neighbors, so to speak 
and then in the wider context of its region, and then within the family of nations as a whole. We can recognize much, it goes very deep, this looking at relationships. We can learn about the level of maturity and integrity of a nation by observing its effect on its neighbors and the effect in the wider world. We can, when we look like this, watch it, observe, we can get a sense of how far is it acting out of personality interests and therefore is a liability for the other nations and in how far is soul energy already expressed with its constructive effect on its surroundings. At this stage, we may not be able yet to perceive much detail. We are only at the beginning. So, yeah, let's just open to impressions, really empirical, not yet straining ourselves to interpret or, or to be, to have a complete picture or something, just really being open to see what comes, be receptive. Um, we will not have time for sharing this time after this meditation, but I, I don't think that this is the last time we do it. Um, so perhaps after the, the webinar is ended, you may take the opportunity to remain a bit with your impressions and perhaps note them down, even if they don't seem to be so precise or, or meaningful. I think it's a good thing in this work specifically to, to take records, to, to take notes. It's building to more understanding as we go. Okay, I don't know, um, Alexander, do you have any um, any announcements before we do the meditation and end then the, medi the webinar with the meditation? Uh, yes, I would like just to mention that uh, Originally, we were not planning to have a session of the lab in uh, August, uh, but uh, now the group decided to have a session on August 1st. So there would be a new registration uh, for this August session because the all previous sessions it was registration to the series, so you didn't have to register for each session. So please just keep in mind that for the next session you will have to register in you. Um, would this not be already for the next, the full next season? It's up to the group to decide. We can say that it will be the first session of the new season uh, mm -hmm. and that would be registration for the whole season. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is the most practical. Agree. Okay. Yeah, so thank you everyone for this deepening work and uh, we will see each other again reconvening in the council chamber in Leo. Okay, so now we prepare for our snapshot. Bringing our awareness back into the council chamber. Mm 
and consciously sitting within it in a moment of stillness, realigning with ourselves. Assembling our hearts around the fire of our combined will to love. Refocusing our shared telepathic field in geometric order. We work in alignment with our co-workers in the ashram and we are helped by deva beings helping us to hold this space. Now let our combined gaze turn towards our planet. And just observe the human family as it is ordered into nations. See if we can discern something of the space in between the nations, the international field of relationships. Dynamic field. Now, let us focus in on our own nation. Looking at it from above, from the council chamber. And becoming aware of, of its field of relations with its neighbors. Take a couple of minutes for this observation, seeing if we can discern the energy dynamics within this relational field, this aura. And just being receptive, not straining to understand at this stage.
Now expanding a bit our view, probing into the field of relationships of our nation within the, the wider region. Taking again a couple of minutes. And recentering for a moment in our council chamber, observing our nation now within the family of nations as a whole. And let us now release this observation 
release our nation with a blessing and bring our consciousness back into the council chamber. Replenishing and realigning in each other's presence for a moment in our telepathic field of elders in training. Holding for another moment our shared flame of the will to love, the will to right relations. And let it pour through each of us into our respective nations and onwards. See it flowing within the entire tapestry of the family of nations. Affirming the will to right relations between all nations. And gently, gradually, returning now to our personal field and to our physical surroundings, our place on this earth, letting our light shine and grounding it as a blessing into the earth. Oh. 